Today we're gonna talk about the best new makeup. I have spent a small fortune over the last two months on makeup. I'm talking about Prada, Valentino, Makeup Forever. They opened a new Sephora right down the street from me and I think it's been open two weeks and I think I've been there about 10 times and I'm not kidding. <laughs> so I have a lot of new products to share with you and kind of give you my thoughts and today I'm gonna to be sharing the products that I love the most. Let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the most recent purchase and one that I've been loving. This is the new Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydra Glow Foundation. I'm sure you guys have seen this all over your feed. I feel like I can't open TikTok or Instagram without seeing someone raving about this foundation. I was a little unsure on how I would like it because it's a very hydrating and glowy foundation. And while I do like a little bit of radiance, I really look for foundations that last all day, that don't get too shiny, that don't move or migrate into like lines around the mouth. I have these deep set smile lines or texture around the eyes. So sometimes when a foundation is really glowy, it doesn't really work for me. So I kind of went into this with just having an open mind and trying not to be too influenced by everyone else's raving reviews. I have worn this foundation five times, five days I've worn this foundation, by the way, so I don't forget, I grabbed the shade 1N14 and it's a perfect match for me. I was really happy to see that the Sephora had my shade. I think because it's a new Sephora and it's kind of tucked away in this little pocket of town that I live in, it's not like a Sephora at the mall or a highly populated area. So they have things in stock, which is nice. Um, okay, let's talk about this foundation. This, so this foundation offers medium coverage. It's radiant, uh, has a natural finish, has a radiant natural finish. It's supposed to be very hydrating. They market hyaluronic acid as a key ingredient in this foundation. They also say that this foundation plumps up the skin. So I want to share a couple of observations with you on this. I would say this definitely offers medium. You can build up to a medium coverage. This is not a full coverage foundation. Today I put it on and I have forgotten to put my Elastin Mineral Tint, my Hydra Tint, which is a tinted SPF that I wear every day. I forgot to put it on today. So when I applied this, I was applying it over bare skin without any tint. I usually apply it over that tinted SPF. And doing that gives me extra coverage. Coverage. Today, when I was before I sat down to film this portion of the video, I looked in the mirror and I thought, huh, I'm not getting as much coverage as I've gotten the other times that I've worn it, and that is why. So if you wear a tinted SPF with this, you can get more coverage. But even without that extra coverage, I still have enough coverage. It does leave a radiant finish, but I always set it with a little bit of loose powder, particularly in the center of the face, just to set it in place. I try not to use a powder that is going to completely eliminate that radiance. I wanna keep some of that. So today I use the Givenchy Prisma Libre, and again, I just powder really lightly around the forehead, kind of down the nose, underneath the eyes, where I tend to get a little shiny, also where I have the most texture. When I look in the mirror, I see large pores here and I see more texture on my forehead. So I like to subtly mattify that down because more radiance and glow will magnify texture. So keep that in mind. If you are someone that has large pores, a foundation like this will tend to magnify it. So make sure that you use a little bit of a powder to kind of minimize that. I did feel like it did plump up like fine lines and texture around the eye area. And it really did kind of, I wouldn't say it gave a total blurring effect, but it definitely smoothed the skin more than I was expecting for a foundation with this finish. So I really like this foundation. I think if you have dry skin, you will really love it. I think if you live in a really cold, dry climate, you will love it. I would steer away from this if you have very oily skin or if you live in a climate that is really hot or humid. This is probably not one that I'll be wearing in the summertime, but this time of year in Austin, Texas, it's still cool and crisp and it's really beautiful. Moving on to a new favorite concealer that I'm so excited to share. I really feel like this concealer is very unique in texture and formula and finish. This is the new Sephora Best Skin Ever Glow Concealer. Now I bought this first in the shade 25 and it was too light, but I immediately knew that I loved liked the texture of it. It's extremely lightweight. I would probably say it's the lightest weight concealer that I own. It's very sheer. It's not a full coverage concealer. So if you like a full heavy coverage concealer, this is not going to be it. However, you can still utilize this concealer by mixing it in with the full coverage concealer if you want to maybe use less of the full coverage or kind of sheer down the full coverage a little bit. This would be a great concealer to highlight the face with because it is so lightweight that I really 
really don't do that with most concealers because I find them to be too heavy when I put them on the skin. This would be really, really nice. This was a little too light. I still use it, and now I paired it with the perfect shade for me, which is 25.5, just to give a little bit of brightness. So what I'll do is I'll go in with this, kind of in the darkest part of my under eye area, the shade that's more of a better match for me, and then I'll take this shade and I'll kind of lift the eye. And then when I blend the two together, I get the coverage that I need, but I also get a little bit of brightness. So I've really been enjoying this. Again, if you want full coverage, this is not the one for you unless you pair it with like a color corrector or a full coverage concealer. Okay, moving right along, Say Beauty launched some new shades in their dewy blush. And I love the shade Sweetie. They sent a whole package of PR to me, which I was not expecting. And I was like super cute. I always love, I don't actually get a ton of PR, believe it or not, I really don't. So when I receive a beautiful PR package, it's kind of like a Christmas. So this is one of my favorite shades of the new ones. This is called Sweetie, and it's just a really nice kind of medium tone rosy pink with some peachy to it. Now, what I like about this formula is it is pretty pigmented, but it's very easy to blend out. I find that it's easier to blend out than the Rare Beauty ones. The Rare Beauty are really nice too, but those are very pigmented, so it's very easy to over apply that. This, if you over apply, you can really blend it out and get that dewy finish, that kind of more sheer wash of color. So I really like this. You can apply it a couple ways. You can go directly to the skin. If you do that, I recommend using a brush that's a little bit fuller and a little bit more dense. I find that when you apply a liquid blush to the cheeks, sometimes if you let it sit too long, it'll have a few seconds to set and you can find it difficult to get a consistent blend out. Like when you start to blend, you might still see where you place those dots. So using a brush that's a little bit more dense is going to help you get a better blend. Uh, so I used the Nikki LaRose in 15 to blend it out when I do that. You can also put it directly to the back of your hand and you can use the same brush or you can use something like the 112. This is what I would use if I put it to the back of my hand. It's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit lighter and fluffier. So this is going to apply it in a little bit of a softer manner. So if you're going to the back of your hand, you have a little bit more control. You can do that. Okay, let's move along to an eye palette that I surprisingly am loving. When I first looked at it, I didn't know that I would love the colors together, but it has been my favorite go to palette lately. This was gifted to me from Chantecai. This is the Sea Turtle palette and they came out with two. They came out with a warm and I believe the other one is cool maybe because that would make sense. But this is the warm palette. It has three shades. You have like this kind of pale gold like vanilla shade. You have this like soft peachy pink and then you have this kind of deep olive shade. All of them have shimmer to them but it's a really nice pearlized refined shimmer. So it's not a heavy frosty metallic finish. I actually have have all three of these on my eyes today and I love the combination. I don't really wear like green or olive shades. I usually stick to kind of warm neutral browns, but I really love this combination together. So I have the middle shade all over my lid packed on with our BK Beauty 203 brush. I used a, let me show you the brush that I used for the crease. So I used the N13 from Nikki LaRose and I really love this particular brush for the shadow because this brush, it's a crease brush and it's fluffy and it has a soft tip. So it really will do a great job of blending as crease brushes should but it's a little more stiff at the base, so it picks up more product than a typical crease brush will. A lot of crease brushes are very soft and fluffy, so they're designed to blend and sheer out, but they don't really pick up heavily, which is nice because it can give you some control, but when you're working with a shadow like this that is a softer, a little bit more sheer, using a stiffer brush can really help you pick up and maximize the amount of, of product that you get off, but this is still gonna blend it really nicely. So I use this first to apply the green shade in my crease. Then I use the 203 and I packed this all over the center of the lid. Then I use this light shade here to just pack right in the inner corner of my eye. And then I took my 203 brush and I even placed it right here on the side to really brighten and open that area up. Then whatever was left over on my brush, I highlighted under the brow with this shade. Now this is shimmery and I usually don't like something really shimmery under the brow. So make sure if you use this under the brow, just have a very light pressure with it or use a fluffy brush. Next up, we have this 
eyeliner from House Labs. This is the eyeliner in the shade Deep Bronze. It's a shimmer, and I just love it. It's a nice, rich color, but it has a little bit of shimmer to it. I really like eyeliners that have a little shimmer to them. They don't have to be like glittery or super sparkly, but what I like about having a refined shimmer in my eyeliner is that it reflects light and it just gives a little softer look to the eyeliner. So I love that. I, I really love that. This formula is nice and creamy, so it applies really consistently onto the skin. Once it sets, it stays in place. I haven't had any issues with this smudging or running. It wears all day. I have this on and I also have it on my lower lash line as well. You have a little time to manipulate it if you like. And then I'm going to share my next favorite, the N12. The Nikila Rose N12 brush is my favorite brush right now for eyeliner. I love it for smudging out liner or setting liner with an eyeshadow, which is what I did today. I took this brush and I took the olive shade and I just kind of smoked out the lower liner and then on the upper liner as well with this brush so this is also a favorite and it's still kind of a new product right so this isn't a new product but let me just tell you I have been like falling re-falling in love with the say beauty highlighter this is the glowy super gel and it's the star glow I think they have it in another option that's a little deeper this is a very lightweight gel highlighter and you guys it just looks so beautiful on the skin it's so lightweight you can use this in a bunch of different ways you can put it all over the skin before you apply your foundation you can mix it with your foundation or you can apply it directly over your makeup which is what I did today it doesn't disrupt the makeup I use the BK Beauty 110 brush to apply this. You can also use your finger if you want. This is my favorite liquid highlighter of the moment. It's just very lightweight. It's very easy to use. I think it's very mature skin friendly. I don't always wear highlighters because they can accentuate texture and usually we put highlighter here which is where I have those large pores so I've kind of steered away from it but this absolutely looks beautiful and very natural. It gives you a very like lit from within look to the skin. Like your skin is just glowing. It doesn't look like makeup. It looks like your skin is glowing. <sighs> okay, let's have a moment for this lipstick. I love this lipstick. If you follow me on Instagram, I've been talking about this lipstick nonstop. This is from Chantecaille, and this is part of the same Sea Turtle collection. This is the Lip Chic, and it's a lipstick. I actually thought this was more of one of those lipstick lip balm formulas that we see, you know, every brand coming out with, because it's very, very hydrating. It but it's not as sheer as those formulas and it's not as like thick and sticky as those formulas. This definitely leans more towards the formula of a lipstick when you apply it, but it feels like a balm on the lips. It has a subtle shine, but it's not super glossy and it has a lot more pigment than those types of products do. So even though I'm saying it's a lot like those, it's also very different in a lot of ways. This shade particularly is my favorite. It's the shade Rosea. It's rose with an A at the end. R-O-S-E-A. So I think that is how you pronounce it. I could be mispronouncing it, but it's a really pretty kind of warm peachy pink. I have it on the lips today with another favorite, which is the Huda Beauty Pinky Brown Lip Liner. And, but honestly, I've worn this lipstick with Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Medium, and that's really beautiful. Any like neutral pink liner that you have will pair beautifully with this and give you the same look that I have today. But I take this with me everywhere. It stays in my purse. If I'm traveling, I pack it with me. I love it. It's so stunning. Okay, let's jump around to a couple other products real quickly, you guys. I picked up a few Valentino blushes. I started with this one. This is the shade eight and this is my favorite shade oh it's so beautiful it's like this peachy pink with shimmer to it but the shimmer is very refined and beautiful it's a powder it's not doesn't feel it's not a cream but the best way for me to describe it is like a creamy powder feel it is just so luxe so beautiful marlena actually turned me on to these when we filmed together she was raving about hers and it's so the packaging is just stunning i mean we have to give it up to valentino for this packaging it's stunning and it has this little brush inside here you guys and I haven't I've used it actually once and I will say you know I wouldn't replace my BK Beauty blush brushes with using this but if you're in a pinch or you're you want to throw this in your bag and touch up later this actually makes a pretty decent like uh, applicator you know usually the applicators I see in makeup products are kind of garbage <laughs> this one's actually pretty nice so I love this I ordered it in two other colors I loved it so much I think it's like 42 45 dollars maybe so if you know if I play if you know if I bought three of them that I like them and I'm planning 
planning to buy more, but a few of them are out of stock. So I definitely want to pick those up because of course they're the most popular, most neutral, versatile shades, but this is really nice. Okay, you guys, I've got a few others to share with you. I did pick up the new Prada foundation. I got it in two shades and I've been testing this for a while. Of all the products, this is the one that I've had the longest, maybe two months now, six weeks or so. It's the Prada Reveal Skin Optimizing Foundation. Let me tell you about this. So this foundation has more of a kind of natural matte finish compared to like the Makeup Forever. The, it has more coverage than the Makeup Forever. I would kind of put this in the same class as like my Dior Forever foundation, but my Dior Forever foundation, I like a little better. This is nice. Don't get me wrong. This is very nice, very good foundation. I think it's $70 though. It's very, very pricey. So just because of the price, I'm a little hesitant to say like, oh my God, I love this foundation. You have to have it because I think that there are foundations as good, if not a little bit better that aren't $70, that are less than $70. The packaging is beautiful. I do like that you refill this. So you actually pull this out and you refill it when you buy it. The shade I have is MN40. When I first got these, I was trying to look for the shade names. I'm I couldn't find it anywhere until I realized that you pull this out and then you see it, but it's hidden when it's in here. So it's a nice foundation, definitely a nice foundation. I like it, but I think you're really paying for the packaging because it is beautiful and the name, of course. It's good, but I, I think if it were $50, I'd be like, oh my God, this is so great. You have to get it kind of thing, but at 70, it's kind of like, it's good, but you can find one as good, if not better for a little less. Okay, let's jump into the YSL Candy Glaze Lip Gloss Sticks. I have the shade 13. It's a this really pretty corally peach shade and I did layer it quite a bit because these do lean on the more sheer side but they're buildable you can layer it and you'll get more color and then I also have the shade 15 which is more of a kind of beigey neutral it has a little bit of a pink tint to it but it's really more of like a beigey nude whereas it's right here these are really nice you guys high 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 shine I love the feel of them they are definitely a thicker stickier feel than the Chantecaille not bad, but if you don't like a, a thicker feel on your lips, then you probably wouldn't like this formula. I really love them. I bought the clear as well. I think they're nice. And I have to say, YSL's packaging is just beautiful. It's like the whole Valentino thing. It's like, it's an experience putting on. If you really love makeup, you know, and you love the experience that you get when you apply your products, I think when you have special products like this, like the Valentino, it's just a, it's just a special thing. Some people don't not care about it and they're not willing to pay the extra for that which is totally fine, but they, these are just really nice and I have to give them a little bit of recognition for the packaging. Okay, you guys, I've got a couple of more lip products to share. So the Summer Fridays Lip Oils. I feel like these are viral. I think this was the one product that was sold out of the new Sephora that just opened. You know, it was like sold out within the first week. Everything else was fully stocked, but this was sold out. I ended up ordering these. I ordered, well, I ordered one shade. I got the shade Soft Mauve because it was like one of the few that was in stock. It actually looks a little darker than I would normally go for, but these are really, really nice. I'm going to put a little bit on my lips right now. It's going to totally change this color, but these feel amazing. They feel so nourishing. They feel pretty lightweight for these lip oil formulas and they're very sheer. So even though this looks darker, I mean, I know I'm putting this over it, so it's hard to tell, but let me swatch it for you. Let me show you guys. So this is like, this is what it looks like when it's really, really built up, right? But if you just do like a sheer wash, let me show you, this is what it looks like. If you just want a sheer look. So it's pretty neutral. They feel amazing. I'm enjoying these and I would probably order another shade. I do want to call out though that at that new Sephora that's been open for like two weeks, the testers of these are so messy and maybe it's because they get tested and used so much or maybe it's something to do with the packaging. I don't know. Mine hasn't been used that much yet so I don't know if, you know, in a three or four weeks I'm going to start having lip oil ooze out. But I will say all of the testers at my Sephora have like lip oil oozing out of them. So there's a little caution for you. And the last product I have to share is this liquid blush. The brand is C-I-E-L-E, C-L-A, C-L. Um, I believe the founder of this is a makeup artist. I actually follow her on Instagram. Her name is Nikki. And she launched this brand at Sephora within the last few months. I actually picked this up a while back and it was one of those products that I used when I bought it. And then it kind of sat on my vanity. And then I've recently been using it and loving it. So good. So this is a blush and protect. It has an SPF of 50 in it. This is the shade Bihati, Bihati, 
I'll have all the shades listed down below. It is just like a neutral rosy pink. So when you apply this on the hand, you can see it looks really pigmented in full coverage. It blends out beautifully though, really, really nice and consistent. It has a slight little dewy finish, but it's not super sticky or tacky or glowy. It's really, really nice. I love this. I'll definitely be checking out other shades to pick up in this. So that wraps it up. I'll have all the products that I mentioned listed, linked in the description box, and I'll also tag them in YouTube if you have that feature where you can shop on YouTube. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what the hot new makeup that you've picked up that you've been loving is down below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.